Curious about lip filler? Whether you want a subtle pout or bold plump, Juvederm lip fillers can give you a customized lip look. Juvederm Volbella XC and Juvederm Ultra XC can last up to a full year with optimal treatment, giving your lips added volume for smooth, natural-looking, and long-lasting results. Whether you're concerned about your thin lips or simply want fuller lips, ask about Juvederm lip fillers at your next appointment with your licensed specialist. And download the Alley app, that's A-L-L-E, the official loyalty program of Juvederm, to save on treatments. For important safety information and to find a licensed specialist, visit Juvederm.com. That's J-U-V-E-D-E-R-M.com. Not for people with severe allergic reactions, allergies to lidocaine, or the proteins used in Juvederm. Common side effects include injection site redness, swelling, pain, tenderness, firmness, lumps, bumps, bruising, discoloration, or itching. There's a risk of unintentional injection into a blood vessel, which can cause vision abnormalities, blindness, stroke, temporary scabs, or scarring. Talk to a licensed specialist to find out if it's right for you. Going on the hotline, Blair Kirkhoff, longtime sports journalist for the Kansas City Star. Been plenty to write about for Blair and the others at that newspaper for quite some time. Blair, welcome. Hey, how you guys doing? We're doing okay. So Good. Twitter is a X, whatever you want to call it. It's a vile place. Uh, <laughs> and when a game happens like last night with the Chiefs, and there's an obvious pass interference call, that doesn't get called, and it's part of a game in which uh, the officials miss the normal allotment of calls. I don't know if it's more or less. I don't really keep track. Uh, but how do people keep their sanity this in this day and age? <laughs> you didn't think I was going there, did you? Yeah, well, I, I didn't realize it was going to be as big a deal on social media as it was uh, you know, when I went to bed last night and then, you know, to look at the sort of the, the Monday morning quarterbacking of the game. Um, yeah, there's some riled up fans about, yeah, it was a bad call. It was a bad, it, it was, a, it was a miss. I don't know if it was a bad miss, but it was a miss. Um, it, it didn't help that Chris Collins work on, you know, on television uh, went on about it. They, they replayed it. I don't know, three or four times, and Chris Collinsworth was all over it. And I think he made sure to identify some calls that didn't go the Chiefs' way over the next few minutes. But but by then, um, you know, the damage had been done, and uh, and so yeah, it, it became a it became one of the post game themes, certainly in Atlanta, in Kansas City, not so much, but but in Atlanta and nationally. And I I think part of it is. The Chiefs have risen to the to a level where you know they they you know they, they must get all the calls and um, they, they you know Mahomes isn't playing well so they've got to uh, they've, they've got to get bailed out some way and it's a conspiracy and you're right there's social media to, to a large extent is not a you know a, a wonderful exchange of ideas but a cesspool of <laughs> of ideas. Why is it Patrick Mahomes playing well? And and I don't want to be like too over dramatic or exaggerate, but is he entering a different uh, stage of his career? Are we can we are we going to see a different type of Patrick Mahomes over the next five years or so? Yeah, I think we've already started to see it in the last couple of years. You know, his his average yards per completion um, uh, has been down, but was has been steadily dropping over the last couple of years. Average yards per attempt, I should say, not completion. Although I'm sure it's completion too, but average yards per attempt has been steadily falling, and it's even lower after three games this year than it was a year ago on an average basis. So I, I do think that. And then he's talked about it. Andy Reid's talked about it that the the game's different. Defenses are different. Um, you know, the the two high safeties are, are making it very difficult for um, for him to go over the top. Even though they they added speed this year with Xavier Worthy, um, Rasheed Rice certainly is a lot better, and he's showing it. Um, it's been difficult for them to get yards and chunks. So I just think they've evolved into a team that. Uh, is more willing to 
to take the eleven play seventy five yard drive than the you know the three play seventy five yard drive. And um, it's hard to complain when you're three and zero uh, and and you're still you know the, the Super Bowl favorite. So things I think are still going their way. They're just going their way differently than than it has been the last few years. Blair Kirkhoff with us, and and while I agree with the the premise of Jeff's question, it still seems like. Actually, it, it's a fact that when Patrick Mahomes needs to make a play, he makes a play to this day. So uh, it's uncanny. And, yeah, his numbers aren't as gaudy as they've been. Uh, Travis Kelsey is obviously in the decline phase of his career. But you mentioned Rasheed Rice, who looks like an all-pro wide receiver right now through the first three weeks of the season. Uh, the defense is is uh, close to elite, if not elite. So when the Chiefs continue to evolve, it uh, maybe takes a little of the pressure off Patrick Mahomes, right? Yeah, all that's true. Um, I, I think that I think Rasheed Rice is getting the type of receptions that Kelsey used to get, um, and and putting up the numbers that Kelsey used to put up. So. Um, I, I think that has something to do with the attention that Kelsey receives defensively and how it opens things up for other players when Kelsey does get a lot of that attention. Uh, and I think it's a good point, Bob, that you make about the defense, that uh, it is, a it, it is if not the best in the NFL, it's one of the top five. And if you're just above average offensively and – that's, I think that's where the Chiefs are. They're, they're not what they were in 2018 or 2019, the Tyreek Hill type of, of offense. Um, but if you're above average, scoring you know, on more than half of your possessions, um, you know, getting, touch, get, getting two to three touchdowns per game and having a field goal kicker that doesn't miss, so you're always in the 20s somewhere, and you've got a defense that, can hold you know a team in its own building to 17 points, and you know hold the Baltimore Ravens in the opening game to 20 points. You're going to win. You're, you're going to win these games, um, and that's that that's all. Now, do Chiefs fans, you know, do they wish it were a little more a little more comfortable margin for these? Absolutely, they do. Um, but let's you know let's, let's try to find any other team in the NFL. Who who would they? You know, who'd you trade places with? There, there isn't anybody. So I, I think they're in good shape. But what, what's happening, I think, is we went into this season because of the acquisitions of Xavier Worthy and Hollywood Brown, thinking that, um, all right, offense is uh, it's going to be a little more exciting, a little more up-tempo, a little more productive, and it hasn't been that way. Um, so it's, it's, it's just more like it was a year ago when they won the Super Bowl by – you know, by, by holding teams down and scoring just enough to win. But I saw the stat last night that they've won nine straight games. Uh, and and uh, there's been a lot of teams in the NFL history to win nine straight games, but the margin in these nine straight games is 54 points. It's the lowest point total or lowest collective margin of any team that's ever won nine in a row in the NFL. They just find a way to win. It's a good number, Blair. Good job. Uh I want to switch to the Royals real quick, Blair. Uh, this is now two seven-game losing streaks. This one is maybe and counting in situations where they really had their own destiny to just grab. Are they built for this last week of the season to uh, finally control their own destiny and, and finish it off? Oh, man, I don't know. I was out there Sunday, and um, it, was, it was gloomy. <laughs> Um, you know, here they are playing a San Francisco Giants team that's been eliminated from contention. One of those games, one of the, I, I can't remember, what, it wasn't Sunday, but one of the previous two games, maybe it was Saturday's game, faced a pitcher who has been scuffling. And, yeah, it was Saturday because they got shut out again on Saturday. And, and of course, they don't, yeah, they don't score. Um, it, it really is tough. I, I was talking to somebody about this the other day. Since, since the pennant, seasons right of 14 in the world series of 15 the royals have been a team that you know is disappointed for five months of the year falling woefully behind you know barreling toward a hundred loss season and then somehow in september you know they 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 show this 
little promise, you know, there'll be there'll be a 500 team, and you think, oh, what a great September. Maybe that can carry some momentum into this year, the following year. And now, when they really need to have a good September, they're awful. They have been awful. Um, they're, they're getting enough starting pitching from from Seth Lugo and Cole Reagans uh, and even Michael Walker, the, the, the reliable ones, but they, they absolutely cannot hit. I think it's four runs in the last five or six games and Bobby Witt's doing all he can to hang on. But, um, but it's just, nobody, nobody is hitting the ball for the Royals. And I don't know. I, I until I see differently, I, I don't have a good feeling about how it's going to end for the Royals. You're, you're right, Jeff. They, they have, um, as of today, uh, they control their, their destiny and um, they're, they're actually, uh, the twins, their best hope now. The twins are slumping as badly as they are, and and maybe the twins can stay cold like the Royals, and they could somehow back into this thing. But I just don't have a good vibe about the Royals. They they got to find a way to win a game. Just win a game, and once you win one to break it, everything will feel differently. But that clubhouse was a somber place on Sunday, and it would be an absolute shame if this team couldn't com- couldn't complete this marvelous turnaround season uh, by making the playoffs. Blair Kirkhoff with us from the Kansas City Star. You kind of answered now that you're going, uh, the Royals are going to Washington, and while the Nationals are not uh, a very good team, uh, they're, tra- they're playing, they're playing hard. they got a bunch of young guys, and they don't have C.J. Abrams, who stayed out too late at a casino, so that's helpful. Uh, but that's not going to be an easy series. And then three games at Atlanta to finish it, and the Braves uh, are still in the wild card hunt in the National League. I presume they'll still be in it uh, when that series unfolds. Uh, how devastating would it be for the Royals not to get into the playoffs? For, well, and not it, just for the franchise, it, but for the fan base. Yeah, it, 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 initially it would be. I mean, it, because... There, there's been a lot of excitement about this team and this season. You, and, and in baseball, we, we don't have many examples of a team losing as many games. I think it was 106, right, that the Royals lost last year and then turning around and making the playoffs. That's that's incredible stuff. I mean, it's a very, it's validation for what they did in the offseason, the, the moves that they made to bring in the players that, that they did. All the moves worked for five months. Um, and so – it, it would be it would be terrible if they didn't make the postseason. But I think, you know, the, the, whatever happens down the stretch, uh, the, the, they'll, the, this season will be looked upon fondly. They've already clinched a, a, an over 500 record. They're going to finish over 500. That hasn't happened since 2015, uh, the, the World Series year. So you you would have to rate this season a success. Uh, but we're going to need some. If, but if they don't make the postseason, you're going to need some distance before you apply that measure. Uh, you're just going to because the pain I think for not making the postseason is going to hurt so much. For and and the collapse will be epic, right? They were tied for first with the Guardians sometime in early. I forgot what the date was in August, but tied the Guardians for first, and we're thinking. You know, they're, they're, you know, they could run down the Yankees even to have the best record. They were only four games behind the Yankees to have the best record in baseball. And now they're, you know, they're, they're doing, they're desperately trying to, you know, just to win a game so they can stay in the playoff hunt. All right, Blair, always good. We appreciate your time. Thank you, and we'll catch up soon. Sounds good, guys. Take care.